Hey cruisers, welcome back to Vlogtoberfest. So good to see everyone in the chat here tonight. Everyone's talking about sports and ports and all kinds of fun things. So tonight we are here to talk all about self debarkation. We're gonna talk about what it is, who it is right for, who it is not right for, and try to answer any of your questions about self debarkation. And we are going to now ask Mr. Cruise Tips TV to bring the chat up on the screen so all of y'all can see what everybody is saying when you watch this as a replay. For those of you who are new, is it up, Mr. Cruise Tips TV? Yay, the chat is rolling. So, for those of you who are new to Cruise Tips TV, this is a live stream, meaning that we are streaming live from YouTube. And um, normally in the live chat, we have folks who are are commenting in real time but the unfortunate thing about live streaming is that when this sucker saves to replay none of your comments save so Mr. Cruise Tips TV and his wild programming skills has found a way to somehow get them up on the screen to be eternalized forever for all of you all. So happy Friday night, everyone. To those of you on the East Coast and in Canada and afar, thank you for staying up late for us. It is 6.30 here in California. It is the end of my work week and it is cold in California. It is cold, it's, it's chilly. Like I'm wearing pajama bottoms and slippers right now and our windows are closed, which is very, very unusual. So I'm loving it, feeling fall in the air and ready to have some fun cruise talk. So I'm seeing a lot of people in the chat saying that they absolutely love self debarkation. So let's talk about it, you guys. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with the concept, let's start off by talking about what self debarkation is. Now, the first thing I want to tell you guys is that it goes by a lot of different names. So all of the different cruise lines call this concept of walking yourself off the ship early in the morning with all of your luggage, something different. Some cruise lines call it walk off. Some of them call it self assist. And I heard today that Royal Caribbean calls it express departure. So whatever you call it, let's talk about what it means. What it means is that on your last day of the cruise, wham, nobody likes the last day of the cruise, instead of putting your luggage outside of your room the night before to be collected by the cruise ship staff and taken for you to the cruise terminal to be collected on departure from the ship, you would instead not put tags on your luggage, you would keep your luggage in your room and you will be responsible for taking all of your luggage off the ship yourself. Thus, the self-assist or self-debark concept. So what that means is that you will get some kind of a notice in your room if you elect this type of self-debarkation, which by the way, most cruise lines allow you to make the judgment if you would like to do it. Um, you probably wouldn't opt to do this if you were doing some kind of a cruise line transfer, but that's a story for another day. So you would receive some sort of a notice in your newsletter, the cruise net newsletter the night before, telling you how the process works. So every cruise line does it a little differently. In our experience on all the cruises we've ever been on, they generally have you meet very early in the morning at a central gathering point. So one thing to know about self-assist debarkation is that you're usually the first people to get off the ship. You're one of the first groups to get off the ship. So you are up early and you probably meet in a lounge or a bar or a restaurant with a bunch of other people who look very eager to get off the ship, but woke up way earlier than they wanted to, right? Isn't that the truth? I mean, come on, you guys, that's generally what happens. So at that time, you and all of your luggage and your party, once the ship is cleared through customs, would then be invited to proceed to the gangway and through customs and instead of stopping to get your luggage after customs or before customs or wherever you get your luggage, you're going straight to your transfer, your bus, your vehicle, wherever it is that you're going just outside the cruise terminal. So it can be very efficient, which leads us to our next point. Who is this right for, right? Is this right for everybody? Probably not. It is great for people who want to get off the ship early, number one. Number two can handle all of their bags. So you have to think about all of your luggage here, including the souvenirs that you bought, your carry-on stuff, your the stuff you checked on the way in. You have to be able to handle all of it. And you also have to remember that the elevators are going to be a lot more crowded on disembarkation morning. So you may, may want to consider whether or not you could manage getting those bags down a set or 12 of stairs if you became frustrated with the weight for an elevator. 
Generally speaking, we take the stairs. My husband is six foot tall and has some big guns. So usually he's got two suitcases and I have one and a kid on the other hand, and we manhandle those suckers down the stairs very cautiously, but that's how we handle it. So you have to think about that. The elevators are absolutely available, but depending on the ship you're on, they may be a little bit crowded. So we're gonna recap. You want to get off the ship early, you're an early bird, or you got to be somewhere early. Maybe you're driving home and you're just anxious to get home. You can handle all of your own bags, right? You don't really want to put your bags out the night before, and you feel confident about the fact that you don't need any kind of assistance. So that is probably the group of people that self-assist debarkation is best for. So let's talk about who it is not right for. And once we get through that, we'll, I'll come into the chat for the rest of our, our 25 minutes together and we can talk all about this. Who it's not right for, and you guys weigh in on this too. I'd love to hear what you think about who it is and isn't right for, are people who have large amounts of luggage. That doesn't mean that you're a bad packer. It doesn't mean that you, you, know, you couldn't normally manage your luggage. It just means maybe you packed a lot of stuff this time and you're gonna relax and let the cruise ship help you with it. There are so many people that do. It's not right for people who don't want to get up early because guess what, guys? That self-debarkation call comes early. 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock is the normal disembarkation time, and it is your vacation. For some people, the idea of being dragged out of the room at the earliest possible hour is ridiculous on a vacation. Why rush, right? So that is an argument. It's probably also not right for people who are mobility impaired, who have an injury like a back injury, a knee injury, something that could be um, aggravated by dealing with heavy bags. Those are the types of people who probably should avoid this process, especially because when you're on a cruise, you get spoiled. There are so many different people to help you. So that's kind of our summary of self-assist debarkation. For the record, it is something that we take advantage of 99% of the time. But I will say that when I'm cruising with my mom, she does not do it. So she's gonna go ahead and put those bags out the night before and she's gonna let that cruise line pamper and spoil her. And she's gonna go sit in a lounge or enjoy a nice leisurely breakfast. And she's gonna get off that ship when she's darn well ready. So everyone is different. Everyone has different, as my son says, everyone has different tastes, mama. And we think that um, that's perfectly reasonable. So let's get in the chat and see what you guys are up to over here. A lot of, a lot of mischief in the chat tonight, I see. All right, let's see what kind of questions are coming in. Mr. Cruise Tips TV, how are we doing? We're doing okay. We had a couple of questions about Faster to the Fun. Okay. Kind of, I, I kind of addressed a little bit, but it is a separate topic. I don't know if you want to cover that. Sure. What's the question about Faster to the Fun? I would be happy what to answer. What is Faster to the Fun? Okay, who, who asked? Barbara Shulman. Hey, Barbara. Faster to the Fun is Carnival Corporation's way of allowing you to pay your way into a loyalty program, sort of. Kind of. So basically what you're doing is paying a flat rate per stateroom, not per person, usually ranging from $49 to $79 per stateroom. With that program that you find in the shore excursions area, which is very odd, of your um, Carnival Cruise Personalizer, I'm trying to remember what the Carnival Cruise Personalizer is called right now, um, you, uh, you pay for all of the members of your stateroom to have priority embarkation, priority disembarkation, expedited luggage service to your room, and in some cases tendering and a few other perks. Um, it priority dining reservations as well. To us, it's worth it just for the priority embarkation alone until we're platinum on Carnival. We love Faster to the Fun. So it's controversial. There are some people who have platinum and elite status with Carnival who don't like the fact that people can buy their way up into the loyalty because they think it diminishes the experience for people who have earned their loyalty. So it's, it's kind of, you know, if you look on message boards, you'll see a lot of controversy there. So, all right, I'm ready, Mr. Cruise Tips TV. What are the questions do we have that I've missed? I don't know if we can answer this one. But okay. Can you, can you bring sand back from the beaches? My answer is, I guess it depends on um, how much. Can you bring sand back for the be from the beaches? I would be less concerned about the cruise line's policy on it because I don't think the cruise line would stop you from bringing sand back, but more about the um, the place that you're taking the sand from and their policy on it. You might be surprised that certain places that have like you know, national park status or some kind of protected status that would allow, wouldn't allow you to. But I don't think anybody's going to stop you from putting, you know, taking a little Ziploc bag and taking some sand back. I've heard of people doing that, but I've never heard of someone having it confiscated or something like that. Caleb Sen has an appropriate question for the chat. He said, 
What is the best time to leave the ship? Caleb, it depends on you. It depends on what kind of cruiser you are. If you're a really laid back cruiser and you're not in a rush to get off the ship, the best time to get off the ship is as late as you possibly can. <laughs> if you wanna be somewhere, if you're driving home, if you have an early flight, then the answer is probably as early as you can. And then there's of course, going to be people and situations that fall sort of sprinkled in between early and late. So it depends on you. It depends on what your, your personality is all about. Um, Christine Levesque says, if you choose the option to let the cruise line help with luggage, what time do you get to disembark? Christine, that's an excellent question. So if you do that, you put your, your bags out the night before and then you are assigned a colored, you're assigned colored luggage tags. Those colored luggage tags are assigned to you based on your individual travel situation. So the cruise line is going to survey you early in your cruise and ask you, what you're doing when you get off the ship. Are you flying? Are you flying with your cruise line or independent of your cruise line? Are you driving? Are you taking a transfer? Is that transfer with the cruise line or without? Do you have a shore excursion? Based on your answers to that survey, they are going to assign you a time. That time, however, does not have to be adhered to, but you need to go to the customer service desk after they've assigned you the luggage tag and time, which you'll, you'll read about in your debarkation paperwork, and tell them why. So you might have been assigned, say you got assigned really late disembarkation. You got the 1045 purple two luggage tag, but you really wanna get off that ship at nine. If you go to the front desk and just tell them, they're very likely just to simply hand you the luggage tag and time that you want if they can accommodate you, if they can accommodate you. So. Um, I hope that I answered your question. Okay, Pamela Hunt says, we've never cruised before. Do you pick up your luggage like you would after a flight? Pamela, yeah, it's a lot like that. So once you go through customs, after you get off the ship, so you go through customs, you get off, or do you get your bags before customs, guys? I feel like you get your bags before customs and then go through. Well, let's just put it this way. Once you get off the ship, no, you clear customs, and then you get your bags, I think. Sorry, I'm second guessing myself. Get off the ship, walk down the gangplank, walk through customs, and then very much like an airport, there will be an area where your luggage is sort of lined up. The difference is there's no carousels, generally speaking, in these cruise ports. Maybe some of them do have carousels. Instead, it is a big, huge room that looks like an airplane hangar that has rows and rows and rows and rows of luggage. They generally line your luggage up by the color of your luggage tag. So there'll be a sign that says yellow three, group yellow three, luggage is here. And all of the, the bags very evidently have those tags on them. So it is similar to a flight. Okay, I wanna check for more questions. And Mike said you get your bags after customs. Thank you, it's like I know this, but in my mind I was trying to remember the order of things and I, I couldn't quite get it, okay. Some people are saying you get your bags first before customs, and some are saying after. You guys, it might vary by port. Okay, Kent, excellent question. Kent says, is breakfast available for self-debarkation? Absolutely, Kent. The buffets and generally even the main dining rooms will open a little bit earlier for you on debarkation day so that you can go get a full breakfast. Usually you can get hot meals and a very full breakfast, and that's usually what people do. Everybody pretty much eats before they get off the ship. They're gonna take advantage of that last meal. So yeah, that will be available to you. Okay. So most everybody's saying you get your bags before customs. Boat lover, you made it to the live chat. You got logged in. Congratulations. Good job. It's definitely because you take yeah. your bags through customs. Yeah, I always feel like you do. You do. Right. There's no question about it. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see here, guys. Okay. Pamela Hunt says, is it worth it to mark your bags with something so you can easily spot them? Yes, Pamela. And I cannot tell you how important it is to do that if you have a black suitcase or a Navy suitcase. Now you know why we here at Cruise Tips TV have no plain colored luggage. All of our luggage is wacky wild color, more because probably for when we fly because we usually carry off our own, our own luggage, but there's nothing more intimidating to me than a sea of black suitcases and not knowing. So yeah, giant um, a giant bow or ribbon, or in our case, we use a giant luggage strap. We have a fluorescent pink luggage strap with a buckle that has a big white stripe through it. We just pop it around our biggest bag, the one that's somewhat neutral colored so that we can't miss it, and that's how we identify our bags. Very, very cool. 
Hi, Cheryl, you're here. Cheryl, we still don't know why you, why you got sent to the naughty room in the chat yesterday. I hope you don't mind me saying it. Definitely, you broke, it broke Mr. Cruz Tips TV's heart. He's like, what happened to Cheryl? What? Explain it to me again? So don't worry, um, I'm sure it's nothing and it certainly was not us because we would never ever ban you from our chat, my dear. So anyway, hope I didn't call you out and embarrass you, but I just wanted you to know that. Penelope, I love your question. Penelope Perry says, is light colored hard side luggage easy to keep clean? Penelope, if it's high quality, usually you can hit it with some 409 and it'll clean up pretty well. Although it kind of reminds me of tennis shoes. You know how some, like you, you get the tennis shoe clean and then it's just dirty again? Like the white sole part? So. It, it usually works out better, and it's certainly better than fabric or cloth or soft-sided luggage, but um, you just have to maintain it more. But for me, 409 is the best way. So just spray it on and scrub it down with paper towel. Okay, I've got Fran saying she uses colorful duct tape on her black bag. Very cool. Okay. Oh, wow. Wicked Liloni said, I had a bag with skulls on it and no one has one like yours. I love that. Yes, exactly. Never again black suitcases. Yes. Roxanne has black and white polka dot hard shell bag. Very cool. Okay. Allison says, if you choose to let the cruise line help you, would it benefit those who are relying on public transit, cab, or Uber? I don't really understand the question. If you choose to let the cruise line help you, would it benefit those who are relying on public transit? I don't really know, Allison. Let me think about that. I'm not too sure. I'll have to, I'll have to, to, to think about that. John, what stops other people from taking your bags? It's kind of the honor system. I've seen cruise lines have um, claim forms or claim tickets, but generally speaking, it's just good faith. True story. Anybody else have any um, stories about the cruise line checking to make sure that you have only your own bags? Do they check the little claim tag when you're walking out of the terminal? I haven't noticed that they do when I do it that way. Okay. Mm. Jim said in San Francisco, you definitely go through customs after you collect your luggage. Okay, very good. All right, Zachary said, I bought fabric suitcases, but it's very high quality. I've always had terrible luck with hard-sided suitcases. They usually only last a few trips. You have your, I know you have your, your soft-sided Mickey Mouse suitcase. I love it. Some soft-sided luggage is really high quality. I've had the opposite thing happen, Zachary, where for some reason we've just had bad luck with soft side and our hard side holds up okay. I don't know why that is. I just don't know. Okay, lots of questions coming in. Okay. Ha, <laughs> you guys are so funny tonight. Everybody's in, everybody's in, has a good sense of humor. Okay, Sharon C says, what time do you usually go off ship if you have a transfer on Princess? Sharon, it varies a lot because they stagger the transfers. I would say um, I've seen a lot of them depart with transfers between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. That's a pretty common time. Um, they don't usually pull you off the ship with the earliest group, but they usually don't wait until the end either. But again, you're probably gonna find that it varies hugely and you may be assigned a transfer time that's within a two or three hour window. Um, again though, know that you can go to the front desk and ask them to change it for you. You're an experienced cruiser, so you know that any, anyway. Christine wants to know if anybody locks their luggage anymore. Yeah, some people do, but you have to do it at, their, at your own risk because if the cruise line decides they wanna open your bag after they put it through the x-ray machine, they'll take your bag to the naughty room and you'll have to open it and they'll inspect it by hand. So a lot of people are dissuaded by doing that, so yeah. Okay, all right. Zachary said his grandma accidentally took someone else's bag while leaving a celebrity cruise and they called you and you went back to exchange the bags. Yeah, innocent mistake, it can definitely happen. Okay, um, 8JLP8 says, what happens if you choose self-debarkation and don't get off the ship at your designated time? They'll still let you off. You might get chastised by the cruise director staff, but they generally still let you off. But they do want you to get off that ship when you're supposed to. And there is definitely a frenetic energy around it um, where they'll make overhead announcements and they'll kind of get you get you going. Okay, hey, Sean, good to see you. All right, what else do we have here? You gotta keep the questions really brief for me, guys. If they're super long, it's hard for me to read them, okay? Um, Megan Leaf Ewing says, is self-debarkation better if you're flying? Megan, that's a very interesting question. 
it isn't always better if you're flying because you may be taking a transfer or some kind of transportation to the airport that won't allow you to take self debarkation, do self debarkation because usually if you have a transfer through the cruise line to your airport, they discourage that and they want you to go during that time, get on the bus at that time and they wanna help you move your luggage from the ship to the bus. So not always. If you have independent transportation to the airport, for example, you might want to do that, but my advice would be if you have a, if you don't have to rush to the airport, don't. Enjoy the time on the ship for as long as you can because being in an airport forever just stinks, right? So hopefully that was clear enough. Okay, um, Becky says, do you put copies of important papers in your luggage? I heard they should be in a different place than the originals. Becky, we absolutely do. Um, what we do, generally speaking, is if we carry our passport with us on our person, so I'm carrying my passport with me in my purse or backpack, I then make sure that my copies of my passports are in a different bag entirely, tucked into some silly area, like in my toiletry bag or my swimsuit bag or something like that. I want them separate in a different bag so that they're not going to be lost. But when I get on the ship, those extra copies will go in my safe unless I'm going ashore and then the passport copies will go ashore with me and the actual passport will go in the safe. Hopefully, again, that might have been a complicated answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Adil says, I have travel anxiety and I binge watched all your videos before my last two cruises and I was totally put at ease. Thank you. That is so sweet of you to say. I'm glad. That's wonderful. We will gladly be your, your, um, your travel anxiety therapy any day and I'm flattered that you would say that. Okay. Mr. Cruise Tips TV. What, what do we got? Got a question from Bradley that I can't see? We do. It says, what does priority disembarkation look like on mm -hmm. cruise lines you have been on? Bradley, on the cruise lines that we have been on, priority disembarkation looks a lot like this. Um, you're notified the day before you get off the ship as to what to expect. So you are told where to be and what to expect. So for us, I'm going to give you... I'm gonna give you the Cruise Tips TV family version of what it looks like. Are you ready? Okay, this is the real world version. I wake up at 5.30 in the morning and go get coffee for myself and my husband. My son sleeps until five minutes before it's time to get off the ship and then we dress him in bed <laughs> and drag him out of bed and go, okay, honey, it's time to go. Here's a blueberry muffin, you can eat it on the way. I've gone and gotten my breakfast. My husband's not that hungry yet so he skips breakfast and takes a muffin for the road i'm giving you the details okay and then um it basically it looks like us walking out of our cabin between 7 30 and 7 50 a.m making sure we're you know we've got the bags distributed well between our family so what's safe to get down those stairs what can i handle what can my son handle what can my husband handle and what frame of mind are we in we make our way generally down the stairs we don't like to take the elevators because it takes forever because everyone's trying to do it and then we end up in whatever lounge we're assigned in and then generally speaking it goes one of two ways either you get there and they're already escorting people off the ship and you're like, I'm 10 minutes early. What are you guys doing? Why did you already start? And you find out that customs just cleared the ship early and you're like, boom, off that ship at 745 in your car at eight. Or, or the other way it goes is you get to your lounge and there's a lot of people already there and they're already starting to look grumpy and you sense a delay. And maybe 15 minutes after the time you're really supposed to go start self-debarking, someone comes on a microphone, the cruise ship staff, and says, ladies and gentlemen, we're still waiting for clearance from customs, the local authorities. Thank you so much for your patience. And everybody grumbles and checks their cell phones. And they're all depressed because, after all, they're getting off the ship. So by that time, usually, I've never had a delay beyond 30 or 45 minutes, and usually it's been a customs problem, not a cruise ship staff or organization problem. At that time, it starts to move. And usually it's a pretty short walk from whatever lounge to the exit of the ship. So they generally have you meet in a lounge that's really close to the exit. You follow the cruise ship staff, you get your, your card scanned one last time so that they can account for you being off the ship. You then proceed or zigzag down the same gangway gangplank that you came onto the ship and you wait in a customs line 
and then you're in your vehicle in your transfer and you're out. It's quick. We really, we have had ship to curb experiences that were less than 10 minutes on self debarkation. And we've had some that are an hour. So what do you, what do you have to weigh in on that? No, Sir. I'm just wondering, since you specifically said priority, if he was looking for a comparison <gasps> to a non-priority. Oh, I don't know if that's what you're Bradley, about. did I answer your question incorrectly? Oh, you meant priority disembarkation versus self. I'm so sorry. Okay, well, maybe I did answer his question right, but priority disembarkation is going to look really similar because usually the priority people get off right after the self debark people. Okay, so you're going to do the same thing if you're priority. So you're going to have a, a nicer lounge than everybody else. So you're going to be in kind of a premium area. They may even have coffee and snacks for you, maybe. And you'll start getting off the ship after all the self debark folks will, but the difference is you don't have any bags with you. And there's usually a little bit more of a leisurely feel. Hopefully one of those two explanations answered your question. Okay. okay yes, I'm ready. Jamie Kay has a question. She says, has anyone asked what the favorite cruise line disembarkation experience is like? And just to get you started off, I think it, you can't really say, oh, my favorite line for self-disembarkation mm -hmm. is yeah. X because it changes. It changes. So some, who was it again that asked? Jamie Kay. Jamie Kay kind of said, who's our favorite line for self-debarkation? And it isn't by cruise line for us. It, my husband made a good point. It changes all the time. We've had exceptionally smooth, flawless, and quick um, self-debarkation processes with every cruise line we've ever been on. And that same cruise line could kind of disappoint us on the next try. So I would not, I would not categorize them. Carnival, miracle, self-debarkation was lightning fast. I will say that that's probably one of the best ones that I have, I, I can remember in recent history. Do you remember that one, honey? Carnival Miracle. Do you remember being like, whoa, this is amazing. Sometimes it, it's amazing. Sometimes it's horrible. Yeah. Sometimes you feel like you walk off the staircase and off the ship without any waiting and it can be amazing, but sometimes it can be terrible. Here's why. On some cruises, there are too many people, um, uh, what's what am I trying to say? There, the ratio of people attempting self debarkation all at one time is too high for the ship, and the shipboard staff perhaps didn't prepare, or they just physically cannot handle it logistically, and you get glutted stairways, glutted hallways, glutted lounges, and a backup of people that makes you want to literally pull your hair out. I you told them what you say almost every time the night before. What do I say every time the night before? I don't think there's going to be a lot of people self debarking on this. <laughs> did you guys? Did you, my, <laughs> my husband said I every single time the night before debarkation. I say to him, I don't think there's going to be a lot of people self debarking on this ship. And why do I say that? I do you know, know why? Yeah. So, okay, the. <laughs> This, but they're going to judge me for this. No, don't. Then don't. Just, just get to the important part, which is the elevators are jammed. The elevators are jammed. Yeah, they're exactly. Jammed. So um, a lot of people who probably shouldn't be doing self debarkation attempt it sometimes, and they're they're they've got too much stuff, and so it can create problems with elevators and staircases. And I will hallways. and hallways. I will tell you that the. Um, the shorter the cruise and the younger the demographic, the more crowded self-debarkation is going to be and probably more chaotic. The longer the cruise, the more relaxed the demographic and the older the demographic, the, le the least amount of people are going to do self-debarkation. That's, I, ha I don't have that down to a science, but in my experience on a three or four night cruise, half the ship is going to self-debark and you're gonna be waiting in lines. So, okay. Penelope, you're really not supposed to debark later or sleep in a little bit. If you're self-debarking, they want you off that ship and they will encourage you to get off that ship. Mm -hmm. I have a question from Janae44. Okay. How do you choose how to debark? Is there a form the night before? Yes. Janae says, how do you choose how to debark? debark? Is there a form the night before? Janae, that's a great question. Early in your cruise... Earlier than you should be presented with anything that talks about getting off the ship, usually on a seven-night cruise, night five-ish, you'll be presented with a 
debarkation questionnaire. Usually they leave them on your bed or they leave them in the little slot outside your door and you get back after dinner and you're really depressed because you see this thing sitting on your bed and it has the horrible word across the top, debarkation. And you're like, why are you talking about debarkation on night five? I'm like in my groove here, man. And you fill out a questionnaire that says, Janae, are you flying after the cruise? If you're flying, what time? Are you driving yourself? And you just give them your information and you check a box that says, I wish to self-assist debark or I do not. And then they will send you a packet of information later that further explains how to handle yourself. So they're either gonna send you more instructions on self-debarkation or they're gonna send you a packet with colored luggage tags and your time and an explanation of exactly where to meet. So you'll get this sheet that's like a full sheet that's an entire matrix of the times and meeting places and who's getting off when. So you'll see an Excel spreadsheet type thing on the top left it'll say it'll have all the times on it that you, you could get off the ship. So it'll, starting at 7.50 a.m. down to 11 a.m. You'll have all the times, and then next to them will be all the different categories of people getting off the ship. So it'll start with self depart debark. It'll start with then the you know the folks who are platinum or whatever higher level of loyalty, and then maybe a large group who took took ten buses is getting off after that. And you'll just see literally dozens of different types of um, of um, debarkation schedules below that. So they're going to give you lots of information. But I hate that questionnaire. I hate seeing that thing on my bed. It's so depressing. It's like, please, can we just not talk about the end of the cruise, right? So, Krish, no gin tonight. Krish, I'm trying to, um, I, I like to, a couple of times a year, I like to do a 28-day no drinking challenge. My son and husband do a no sugar challenge. I don't really eat much sugar anyway, so we kind of do this family thing where we kind of get in shape and we clean it up a little bit. I'm trying, I think I can do it. I do want to have a cocktail on my birthday, though. My birthday is Halloween, so I think I might I think I might deviate on my birthday. That until then, it's Lacroix for me. So, um, you guys popped <laughs> Rockstar Brewski. Hey Bruce, you guys, Rockstar Brewski, who has a great YouTube channel with some fun cruise vlogs. Guys, popped popcorn for the live chat. Thank you. I'm honored. That's super funny. Okay, um, do you have a question from Ryan Richard? I see something popping up here. Okay, I'm ready. Hit me. What about back to back? I'm hearing you need to pop off, but yeah. I'm hearing from my TA that we don't have to pop off. Yeah, um, I think it varies a little bit. A lot of times you do have to pop off, but sometimes they'll do the they'll do a little customs turnaround on the ship if you're on a back to back cruise where you don't actually have to get off and go through customs. They'll bring someone on the ship and let you go through a little lounge or something. But it varies a lot, you guys. It varies by country, cruise line, and the state of security in our world. You know, I've seen a lot, I've seen and heard a lot of different things about back to back processes. Okay, let's see here. <laughs> Zachary, you popped popcorn too. Thanks for the birthday wishes, Mike. Got a, a couple more days here. A few more days. Let's see here. Yep, Ryan, I know. The Canucks may win. <laughs> yeah, Krish, no smelly feet gin. I know. Okay, what other questions um, do we have? Ginger dislikes when the room steward knocks on the door and kicks you off the ship. Ginger, are you sleeping in on debarkation day? I know there's nothing worse, right? I hate it when they escort you out or like encourage you to leave. And the second you get up on disembarkation or debarkation day, you feel kicked off that ship. Um, okay, let's see here. <laughs> okay, Mr. Cruise Tips TV, hit me with some more questions. This got one from Ms. Marie. Hey, Mr. Cruise Tips TV. Oh. I watched a video about single suites on NCL. What do you think of those? Are you answering this question, honey? I, I... Mr. Cruise Tips TV doesn't want to know the answer, Ms. Mary. The, um, the single suites on NCL are the coolest. They are the coolest invention in recent cruise history, in my opinion, because... For the love of God, can we please let single cruisers not pay a single supplement or double their cruise fare? That is wrong. And Norwegian gets my vote for being a class act. And 
making single suites available. And the single studio rooms are really cool. They're tiny, but for one person, they are modern and they are cool looking. I love it. Google some of the newer ship single studios. They've got all kinds of great lighting and stuff. And I just, I think they're great. And they have a lounge. They have, you guys, the single suites, they have like their own lounge. So you can go hang out with other singles who are staying in single suites. That sounds really cool. So I think it's awesome. Kitten Link says studios on NCL are amazing. Yeah. Okay, let's see here. Um, 8JLP8, is there customs on a domestic cruise or only if you travel internationally? Uh, I think that it's probably only on international cruises, but we, we always leave the country on ours because most cruises just touch you out of your country, generally speaking. So I'm gonna let somebody else answer that because I don't feel that I'm an expert in that area. There's a lot of things I'm not an expert in, but let's have somebody else answer that real quick. Um, Kanala Nella says, how do you deal with getting rushed out of the ship on embarkation? Oh, Kanala, with lots of patience and a big cup of coffee. That's all I can tell you, my friend. I'm, I know it stinks. It's Shelly says, does your child go to the kids club? He's getting closer, it's Shelly. He, he goes to the outside and stares in and thinks about it for long periods of time. And then he's like, I'm okay, mom. I'm cool. I just want to go with you guys. Let's go play ping pong. He's getting closer though. He's getting closer and he sees things in there that I know he's interested in, but sometimes it's the other kids that are a little bit of a turn off to him. Right now, the unfortunate thing about our son's situation is that the age group he's in, he is the very youngest of his group. So um, like on Princess, for example, their mid-level children's club is eight to 12 years old and he's eight and he's tiny. And so he, um, it's, I don't think he loves looking in and seeing lots bigger kids. He loves being around babies and stuff a lot. So if he could go hang out in like the nursery all day, I'd probably never see him on a cruise. If he could go to like the baby daycare, hold babies, feed them bottles and like do that, he'd be there every day. But we're gonna keep trying. We just don't want to force him because we love being with him. And in the frenzy of our normal work lives, we never get enough time together as a family. So we cherish him and he he likes to do stuff with us. We're fun, right? We're fun. We do cool stuff. I have a very important question for you. Okay. From Carson B. Carson B. What are you going to be for Halloween? And by the way, happy birthday. Carson, I don't know if I should tell you. Don't you want to be surprised at my Halloween costume? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, sure. let's be surprised. We'll do a video on my birthday in my costume. Um, Carson B., do you know what I was last year? Does anybody want to tell Carson B. what I was last year? Bradley C., my son may be a future pediatrician or something. He will do something with children. He loves babies. He loves kids. Ah, oh, Don, are you talking to me about alcohol right now? Did I ever try the amaretto sour? I love amaretto sours. Of all the sweet drinks, I do like that one. Okay, guys, what was I for Halloween last year? <laughs> oh my God, Zachary, you're so funny. Zachary's saying, what is the best terminal for debarkation? The worst terminal for debarkation is the NCL terminal in Miami, and the best is terminal 29 or 26 and the other RCL in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, Zachary. We're no, no. Night audit, got it. Night audit knows what I was. Bethany got it too. Yes, night audit and Bethany, I was a social butterfly. I was uh, a SoCal butterfly. I was a social butterfly. So I wore a black outfit and then I had a big YouTube felt thing on my shirt and I had little antennas. And um, yeah, it was really fun. It was something I actually did with the, the people that I work with. We were all different types of social butterflies. So it wasn't just me being the YouTube one. We had all of them. So um, we had a Twitter and we had a Facebook and we had a um, Snapchat. And man, people love that costume. We went out all day and hung out in the community and it was really fun. Good job, you guys, on remembering my um, on remembering my costume. Somebody's asking what flavor my LaCroix is. It's tangerine tonight, Nicole. Yes. So Zachary, I want to ask you, is Fort Lauderdale good for disembarkation and embarkation? We are going to be sailing Princess out of Fort Lauderdale soon and I would love to know. So yeah. Rockstar Brewski says you should dress up as Julie McCoy. As who? Julie McCoy. Julie McCoy? Oh my oh, God, Julie McCoy from the Love Boat. Dude, I could pull that off, Bruce. I could totally pull it off, right? Doesn't she wear the little blue blazer, the white skirt, and she has sort of her hair in a bob and the little gold buttons? Mm -hmm. That would be so fun. 
Oh man, I really want to do a Love Boat theme Halloween now. I love that, Bruce. That's a really good one. I also, I really want to do pink ladies for Halloween someday with my office. I think we'd be great pink ladies. That's so fun. Oh my gosh. Christine says, what is your favorite sweet drink on Carnival? Christine, you will learn about me that I don't love sweet drinks, but I love cocktails. So I will tell you that um, Carnival makes a darn good margarita a really darn good margarita. Um, there's a lot of really good ones on Carnival. I need to think about that, but go back and watch my vlogs from Carnival Miracle and watch all the drinks, see all the drinks that I, that I had back in our vlogs there. Okay, um, Ainsley wants to know, I'm really curious, are the MDR open on Princess for self-debark? Sorry to keep asking. Ainsley, usually they are open on self-debark um, day from about 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., yes. Okay, the Eve, thank you so much for your beautiful birthday emojis. Those are beautiful. Okay, guys, we're gonna wrap up in five minutes, so I wanna buzz into the chat and see how everybody's going here. Daryl said Fort Lauderdale is organized chaos. Let's see. Sorry for my drinking noises, you guys. I always have to apologize because my microphone sits quite close to my drinking activity, but it's difficult to talk for this long without quenching my thirst, so please forgive me. And then yesterday somebody teased me because I apologized for drinking my drink. So I just can't win, right? Gail, what does my husband drink on board? He drinks Diet Coke. He's a Diet Coke man. That's his, that's his poison. Pick your poison. It's Diet Coke. Okay. Um, Steve and Kyle said you should do classic years of cruising to now. That sounds really fun. I love it. Um, what else, guys? Uh, Zachary, what are you saying about Fort Lauderdale? All right, things have changed. Yeah, we'll see what we've got going. Okay. Mr. Chris Tips TV, any more questions? No, you got to Ainsley's. That's the one I had. Yeah. Here. Okay, any other last minute questions, everybody, before we sign off here in a minute? We were only going to do 30 minutes tonight, but I knew that would be impossible. <laughs> All right, you guys, don't forget to join us tomorrow, by the way. We're coming back noon Pacific time. We're going to be doing a full hour live stream talking about um, holiday cruising. So we're going to start with Halloween. We're going to talk about Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. I would love to know if any of you are going to be joining us tomorrow. It would be great to have you on. Um, we will be asking some questions about holiday cruising from our viewers throughout the week who have been sending me messages going, hey, I want to know about this. I want to know about that. What can I expect at this time of year and that time of year and then hopefully some of you all can weigh in on your um on your experiences as well roxanne says answer mine i feel like we must have missed something roxanne what is your question type it again please roxanne we Hayes. roxanne type it again we got you okay um works for cruises said um please tell me if the passport copies are enough to get back on the ship or if other ideas needed, um, works for cruises 99% of the time. The only thing you need is your photo ID, like a driver's license to get back on the ship. You need to leave your passport in your safe unless you are going to like past the White Pass Summit into Canada on the train and they tell you to take your passport or some crazy foreign country. But 90% of the time you should never take actual passport off, only photo ID and your passport copies. Yes, but take your photo ID too. Passport copies are not what you want to use. Um, thank you to those of you who are saying that you are um, that you are coming back tomorrow. I really, really appreciate it. Lots of people are joining the Diet Coke, Coke Club. You got a Diet Coke fan club, hun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, Kanala wants tips from you on how to carry tips up the stairs, Mr. Cruz Tips TV. I'm sorry, your your suitcase is up the stairs. Oh man, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. You got to big get big guns. Just muscle it. Muscle it. But don't Stubborn. take, but don't Stubborn. take more than you can handle too. That's a terrible idea. I'm very cautious about it because I'm the kind of person who would trip and fall down the stairs. So I take one small bag and my son's hand and that's it. Yeah, but it helps to have even sides. Even sides. You know, same amount of animals. Yes, exactly. All right, cool. Um, so those of you who can join us tomorrow for the um, holiday cruise, if you have been on a Christmas cruise, a New Year's Eve cruise, a Thanksgiving cruise, what we want you to do is come into the chat and tell us what you experienced on that cruise. I would love for that 
overlay to be just an awesome source of information. We are not, I am not a cruise expert. I do not ever want to pretend to be. We're just sharing what we know and you guys are helping to fill in the gaps. So thank you guys so much. It's Shelly. What is your question, hun? Okay. What is it? I don't want to leave. It's Shelly hanging. Do you yeah, know? I saw that, but um, then she retracted it. But Roxanne okay. says, if I want to sleep in the last, the last yeah. morning, do I have to, have to put my carry-on out the night before? We're doing carry-on and backpack only. Oh, Roxanne, don't put anything outside if you're carrying off your own stuff. Um, you don't want to do that. You want to keep it inside with you, okay? And you can try to sleep in, but you might find that the hallways are quite noisy on the morning of, and you may also find there are overhead announcements that wake you. So um, don't put your stuff out. The only time you put stuff out is if you want them to take it. Yeah, only time you put your stuff out is if you want them to take it. Okay, good. Cheryl, you're coming for Thanksgiving advice tomorrow. Cheryl, I don't think I realize that you're cruising Thanksgiving week, um, but that's cool. Okay, Kylie, I've never stayed in a cove balcony, but definitely they're beautiful and they're interesting, and I love the idea of cruising close to the waterline, and someday I'd love to do that on one of the newer carnival ships. Okay. So it's Shelly. Ah, I found it. Can I bring shells and coral from the beaches? Please answer. I, I mean, I think you could probably take a few shells or coral, but if there are signs on that beach that say, please leave only footprints and take only memories, don't heard, take I've anything. Heard no shells. Huh? I've heard no You've shells. You've heard no shells? Don't bring shells back on board? Okay, I'd be careful about it then. Maybe somebody else can answer that question for you. Zachary said, don't do it. Unfortunately, oh, no. Oh, no. Shells are okay, coral no. This is from Zachary. Shells are okay and Coral said, Coral's no from Zachary? Mm -hmm. Okay. Rockstar Brewski has a tip. Go to bed earlier on the last night. Yeah, that's really good advice. It's practical advice and nobody wants to do it, but the reality is you're going to have just a better overall day, right? Yeah. Okay, good, you guys. I'm hoping that all of you have had your questions answered. Um, if I have missed your question, please, please wait until this saves to a replay and leave your question for me. I will get it for you later. I will see all of you tomorrow at 12 o'clock noon Pacific time back here, right here on Cruise Tips TV. Weigh in as experts, ask questions, anything you'd like to talk about on holiday cruising. We're going to try to stay on topic tomorrow. Happy Vlogtoberfest, y'all. Until next time, see you on the high seas. See you tomorrow. Bye. Hey, click me to subscribe.